Hello everybody, let's create some cliff environment. This is easier than you think because we are just going to model some simple basics and use some free PBR textures and also to get some life in our scene we will use some assets in the end. Delete the default cube as always and also the lamp keeps the camera. Add a plane and scale it up by 100. Apply the scale, go to edit mode and make a loop cut right in the middle. Also bevel the loop cut and extrude it down a little bit. This will be our ground. Then subdivide the plane a couple of times, enable proportional editing and deform the plane to a shape you like. Select one edge line next to the river, shift D to duplicate, P and selection. So we have a new object. Go to edit mount again, press E to extrude and move it upwards. Add a couple of loop cuts so you have squares and deform our cliff a little bit, so it looks no more natural. Add another plane, scale it up and move it down until our ground is covering the plane completely. Again apply the scale and rename everything for better organization. Position your camera and if you see nothing like me, go to your camera properties and increase the end value to for example 5000 or maybe 10,000. Open the shader editor and select our ground. Press new to add a new material and add your textures. I would recommend to use PBR textures and make sure you choose non-color data for everything except our albedo slash color map. Let's switch to render view and for now disable these checkboxes. Later we will add an HDRI. Select your ground again and bevel the edges next to our river. Then select all and UV unwrap it. But now it looks a little bit blurry because it's stretched up too much. Add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node and increase the scale, for example, by five. So it looks better. Then select your cliff, add a new material. And again, we need texture coordinate and the mapping node. But first we need to unwrap it. So select all and unwrap it. Then increase the scale and the rotation is not correct. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. But that looks a little bit off. Let's change the feature set to experimental. And because we use a displacement node, select your material properties, go to settings, not bump only, instead choose displacement and bump. Then go back to your modifier tab and Add a subdivision surface modifier and choose adapter subdivision. And for better results, go to your render tab and open the subdivision field and choose your camera for a dicing camera. So it will calculate it correctly. And if nothing happens, then just increase the scale of our displacement node, for example, to 30. Enable displacement and bump for the ground too. And also add a subdivision surface modifier and choose adaptive subdivision and increase the scale to 5. Okay, now we need some water. Select your plane and add a new material. Get a complete white. Turn down the roughness to 0.05 and turn up the transmission to 1. Also set the index of refraction to uh, 1.333. Then we will add a bump node, plug the normal into the normal and now we need a noise texture, put the factor into the height and again search for a texture coordinate and the mapping node. Then decrease the scale of our noise texture to 0.1 because we choose the object data and if you are complete fancy you can enable displacement and bump also for the water and add a subdivision surface, adapt the subdivision and simple and Search for a displacement node, plug the factor of the noise texture into the height and the displacement into the displacement. And then you can increase the value to 2 and then you have real geometry for the water. Looks much better. I reposition the camera and now let's duplicate the cliff and position the cliffs so you have a nice environment. Let's scale our water down because it's way too big and if you choose object data you can scale it however you want if you apply the scale it's like you set it up before then let's choose an HDRI so switch to your world shading tab search for an environment texture 
and enable the checkbox scene world. And don't forget to plug in the environment texture to the background. If you want to change the position of the HDRI, of course, choose the texture coordinate and the mapping node and plug the generated into the vector. That's how the HDRI works and then you can rotate it. And if your computer is too slow to handle the rotation in real time, if you have higher resolution, for example 16K or 24K, switch to Eevee. Wait until Eevee compiled the shaders and now you can rotate the HDRI in real time without uh, losing performance. I changed my HDRI and if you have a position you think could work, switch back to cycles. If you have your camera position and your lighting where you want, make sure you cut everything that's not in your, in your scene to save performance. Now it's a good decision to save your scene and get some assets. Increase the strength of the HDRI and also if you go to the color management choose high contrast. In most cases it looks better. And to tweak the HDRI I choose a hue and saturation value. We can change the color of our HDRI, also the, yeah, the, the saturation. And to have more control over your sunlight of course you can add a sun and don't forget to enable scene lights. Rotate the sun like the main source in your HDRI. For me the best method is to look at the shadows and disable and enable the sun. And to get some depth in your scene, go to your view layer properties and enable mist. Go to your shading tab and change from combined to mist only. Then go to your to your world properties and tweak the values until you have some grayscale in the background. Go back to combined and now you can press render. If your system runs out of memory uh, while rendering with adaptive subdivision, go to your render properties, open the subdivision tab and reduce the max subdivisions from 12 to for example 10 or even lower if you don't need it. In most cases this will solve the problem. Close the window, go to your compositing, enable use nodes and search for a viewer node. Then plug it in, yes. And first we can search for a glare node, switch to fog glow, quality high and turn down the mix value to 0.5. How we get the mist path in our compositor. Search for color ramp first, just in case we want to change some values. Then search for mix node and plug it between the glare and the input. Then put the output of the color ramp into the mix node 2 and switch to add. And now you see in the back there's some grayscale added. But that looks not natural and that's why we choose color ramp. But to be honest in this scene setup it makes basically no sense. So just delete it and Forget this. <laughs> yes, and now how we save this without rendering this again. Go to your rendering tab and switch from the render result to viewer node. And here we are. Now we can save the image. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.